All right, so good afternoon. Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, January 13th, 2021. This is the Council on Aging Board meeting for January. I'd like to extend our um, sincerest wishes to everyone for a happy and healthy new year. And um, we're looking forward to a great year here at the Watertown Senior Center. So uh, with that, let's uh, begin the meeting. Um, in Peckold's absence, I will help to go through the agenda. I'm Anne Marie Gagnon, Director of the Senior Center. Uh, so Ray, if we could have a roll call of our members, please. Sorry, Carol Arasian. Here. Dorothy Jean Brown. Mm -hmm. Esther Keeney. Mary Keenan. Yes, she's here. She's just muted. Tom Lewis. He's saying yes, but he's muted. Tom, you're muted. Jenna McCullough. I can't here. see her. Aroxy. Here. And Arlene. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Okay, next, I hope you all received your minutes via either email or the regular <laughs> mail. If you could uh, take a look at them and then we will move forward with a, with a motion. My thanks to Ray, our wonderful clerk for putting those together. You always do a nice job, Ray, thanks. I move we approve the minutes as written. And I second you, Tom. <laughs> Great. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to give a review of our financial status since we are midway through fiscal year 2021, uh, being that it is now January. Um, Ray was able to prepare um, the financial statements for me. And, you know, it's been interesting, you know, with, with COVID and we really weren't sure how this year was going to go, but Marina in program has done such a wonderful job, you know, getting people involved, getting speakers to come on board, encouraging our exercise instructors to, you know, stay on task and continuing to provide um, good programs. Uh, Zoom has made things easier for um, not only participants to continue to come, but also our instructors to come, um, which has been great. And um, we've been able to also reschedule some classes if they've had to be missed. So it's, it's definitely um, kept us on track in terms of spending. And um, some of the music things, uh, events that Marina was able to uh, hold for us also were um, new for us and also had a bit of an expense to it. So you know, when we started all this, I wasn't quite sure uh, what we would what we would be ending up with, but we're um, we seem to be right on track. Um, we had uh, a budget line out of thirty thousand five hundred dollars uh, for fiscal year twenty one, and we have, uh, as of the end of December, had already spent just shy of half of that, uh, fourteen thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars. Um, the other line items that we um, are charged with are office supplies program supplies, uh, food and related supplies. Um, we have in-state travel, emergency assistance, and um, transportation, medical transportation. Um, and medical transportation, you know, we also received um, money for that type of service with um, Marshall Home Fund dollars. And we have been uh, using the Marshall Home Fund grant money uh, first and um, we have been spending that down. So we still have quite a bit of money in medical transportation and we're happy to get people to where they need to go. But of course that too has slowed down due to, um, you know, COVID and, you know, procedures just aren't happening. Doctors would rather do a virtual visit, um, you know, those types of things. Um, those, we also ask for Council on Aging donations towards our programs. There's a suggested donation for fitness programs. Um, in, prior to COVID, we had more donation asks. So if you were here perhaps for the art class or if you were here to listen to a lecture, uh, you know, there was always an opportunity to, to provide a, a donation to us for um, a service if you, if you felt that that was worthy. Um, right now, due to COVID, we've only, um, asked, as you remember, as a group, we decided to make sure we started asking uh, our exercise folks in particular to continue with their donations. And many people have um, 
stepped forward and provided donations. Um, and so far we have uh, $3,245 in not only donations towards exercise programs, but just general donations towards services to the center. Um, is that through the friends or is that a different? So those, are, those would be what we would probably consider fees. They'd be like program fees, um, but we don't, we don't call them fees where they're suggested donations. You know, because we have many of opportunity to maybe there's somebody who can't um, provide that donation and, and we work with, with that person. So that's their suggested donations. You know, we'll still let you into a class. Um, you know, we want everybody to be able to participate um, regardless of the ability to pay. But, you know, if, if we looked at this time last a year ago, um, Ray, can you confirm? Uh, it would probably be double that or triple that. I just don't have the number in front of me. But again, we're also not seeing double or triple the numbers either. So, you know, it's all it's all balanced that way. Ray will give us a report. Ray, you're muted. Sorry, it would probably be um, a little more than double. Right. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. So, but you know, again, like, you know, and as we've talked about in past meetings about our, our program attendance, it's taken a while for people to get used to Zoom. It's taken a while for people, you know, maybe they try an exercise class once or twice and they realize that doing it in the middle of their living room might not be exactly right what they want to do. Um, maybe they'll join in another program or another way. Um, but you know, just wanted to give you a report on, on the numbers. So we appreciate all the donations that we have. Um, you know, we're able to help the, you know, support other programs. Um, it's our contribution to the town, um, you know, for what they do for us is, you know, in terms of helping to fund these line items. Um, so we appreciate that support. But we're in good Anne shape. Marie, this is Janet. Yes. Hi, Janet. Anne Marie. Yep. Yes. Hi. Is this a, um, a stated donation or is it just what, what they feel that they can give? I, a, I know some of it. Go ahead. You know, when we, when we, when we were there, it was like two dollars or four dollars, whatever whatever the program was. Is this now um, uh, a, a stated donation, or is it just what they feel that they are capable of, of giving? Uh, just as in, as if you were coming here to the senior center, the suggested donation mm -hmm. for exercise had been three dollars. Uh, line dancing, uh, line dancing in Tai Chi had been four dollars, but we made the mm -hmm. made it three dollars across the board. Um, yes, okay. You know, um, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for welcome. clarify that. You're welcome. Um, Okay, so that's just a just a brief overview of that we're in good shape and that I'm currently in the process with the team putting together um, it's due on Friday is the budget to the town manager's office for fiscal year 2022. So with plans for what we're going to do from July 1st of this year through the following June 30th, it's kind of really exciting to think that far in advance and know that we're still going to be doing such good work and, you know, bringing lots of good opportunities to people. Uh, Marina and I have been talking um, which I think we'll talk a little bit more in the next agenda item about, you know, um, Zoom programs and other new opportunities. And I wanted to take a minute to, um, ex you know, the, the wonderful program that just happened an hour ago with the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum uh, that we offered had, um, I want to say 36 people or 35 people on it, um, which was fantastic. And everybody had a really good experience and we're looking to um, showcase more programs like that. I do want to, um, express an apology to anybody who was on the call uh, the other day with Marilyn Roach's presentation about the Schick House. We had some major technical difficulties in terms of Wi-Fi. Um, and I know that um, people were concerned um, about the quality of the program. So we're looking to um, make some adjustments and then rerun that program at another time. Uh, so I, you know, I appreciate everybody watching um, who tried to watch. I hope you got something for those who um, did stick with it, and but there's a lot more information that can be shared in um, hopefully a more uh, a, on a stronger Wi-Fi day. Okay. I'd like to say on that, uh, she had great audio. Vi the the visuals were great. She didn't have enough to say. Mm. Okay. It sound it sounded like she was going to depend on Bloomberg, and Bloomberg didn't understand that. Oh. 
Okay, I'm so not sure yeah. that was exactly Carol. The pro thing is that uh, Marilyn can't say an awful lot because she's on the historic commission and the fate of the Schick House is going to lie in the historic commission's district um, as far as whether they're going to be able to demolish it or the st historic commission will allow like a stay of a year or something while we figure out what maybe we can do to save it. So she's kind of has to be careful of what she says. Bob, who wrote many articles on the Schick House and is very knowledgeable, and I'm going to say at least it's probably as knowledgeable as Marilyn, was there to answer questions. And I think that with the technology issues, I think we had some, some problems there and also understanding what Ma Marilyn could answer versus what Bob could answer. So I have kind of apologized for that being on the Historical Society and presenting it, but it kind of was a couple of things things that we had to kind of work through. So, so we'll, uh, you know, these are all good learning experiences. We're all, um, it just, it was unfortunate because as Marina, as people were clicking into Maryland's program, the numbers were getting really high and we were like, oh my gosh, this is the most well-attended program ever. Oops. <laughs> so, um, you know, we, uh, it was, it was an exciting, exciting topic. And um, like I said, we're looking to reevaluate how we do some of these things and, and um, you know, help to support our presenters the best we can in terms of working with the technology too. So, you know, thank you can all I for hanging in there. Program was it? Can I ask which program was that? Uh, Marina, you're muted. That was Sheik's House History. Uh, the day be the yesterday, right? Was it the day before yesterday? Yes, the day before right. yesterday on right. Monday. It was the history of a very historic home in Watertown that had a much historic significance that now the property is um, has been purchased by Buckingham Brown and Nichols to do some um, new field work on. So we weren't having Marilyn, we were having Marilyn come to talk about the history of the family and the home and their contributions to Watertown as well as to the dairy industry in this nation um, in the area. Um, and that that's what her presentation was about because they're fascinating um, many generations yeah. Thank family. You. Mm -hmm. So with that, since we're talking about the budget, um, Marina, we had been talking about some ideas about for next year, you know, like we know that food has been very, very popular. I think you had some thoughts on that. Um, the music has been popular. Anything related to art is really, uh, uh, inter seems to be interesting to, to our clients. Uh, we are bringing the uh, weight management group mm -hmm. on board. Uh, led by Pearl uh, Pressman, who is well known to our community. She's leading um, strength and balance class on Fridays. Mm -hmm. So right after the class, we will be having a discussion about food, about calories, about good recipes. So one exercise class will be floating into the discussion about how to maintain weight or to lose it if you have, if you think that you need to do it. So that would be a uh, novelty because the nutritional part, discussion about nutrition, et cetera, et cetera, wasn't covered that well, wasn't represented. Uh, <laughs> you know that we were doing, bless you, we were doing Armenian cuisine um, twice per week, but it didn't fly. We didn't have a uh, big interest. We had like five, six people, sometimes two people coming and we decided to rethink it. And uh, Anne Marie remembered that Pearl had this class and she's certified uh, trainer. So we decided to try with her. Mm -hmm. So please, and we are open to any other areas which are still not covered, uh, but we're also running into technical issues as well. R right now we have like uh, up to three uh, events per day, Zoom events per day, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we cannot add that much. First of all, we only have that many people who are getting <laughs> tired of being, you know, exercised and educated and entertained. And at the same time, uh, uh, we would need another channel, a uh, Zoom channel to uh, mm -hmm. have probably parallel classes. And Marie and I were trying to establish working relationships with TV, Watertown TV channel. But since they are busy, extremely busy, um, it's still in, in the process. 
uh, the idea is to have a weekly program which would talk mm -hmm. about something going on this week or last week in the senior center for those people who were not able to get involved into the Zoom activities and but still want to hear about us. So that's in the process. And that's where one of my focuses of attention is. What did I miss? Uh, no, nothing. I think that that that's it goes back to what we talked about at another meeting in terms of outreach and how we're going to also reach those people who don't do Zoom. So we're really trying mm -hmm. to put some of our programming on cable access television. And we've had some really good conversations with the team there. Um, it's just now trying to put those into action. And that's our goal for the year. Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I go back for a minute, just about the budget process. So it's, um, there's uh, budget paperwork due to the town manager's office on Friday. And then uh, I'll be having a meeting with him and his team um, at the end of the month. And then um, we wait. And then uh, there'll be budget hearings in the spring like there usually are. Last year they were on Zoom. I'm sure they'll be on Zoom again. And, um, you know, and then the, then the budget vote um, before the start of the new fiscal year. So if you have any questions, just, just please let me know and I'll be happy to keep you informed. Um, so with that, the next item on the agenda is the updates on status reports. Last, um, last meeting, you know, we had formulated our new um, program advisory group and that group um, is led by uh, our member- Helen Dempsey. Helen Dempsey, right, who I don't believe is with us today. Um, but we have a board liaison in Carol Eurasian. And do you have a report for us, Carol? You're muted. You Thank have you to unmute you. yourself. Thank you. I did. Uh, it was, I enjoyed going to the meeting because people had jobs and knew what they were and did them. Uh, Helen <laughs> is here. As she made Tom the moderator, he, and he was wonderful, and she was wonderful. Uh, they asked great questions of Marina. Uh, um, we found out art classes and Joanna's, specifically Joanna's exercise class, are the highest attendees. Thank, we know that thanks to Margie. Thank you, Marge. Um, and they wanted to make a get a current list of participation to see what's what's going on now. And um, they had they set each other jobs. It was a riot. I mean, it's nothing like this meeting at all. Um, like uh, Susan was gonna write something. Uh, let's see, what is her last name? Carol Fish, Susan Fish. Susan, Susan Fish, and she did as well as Carol, Carol wrote uh, an article for the February newsletter as well under the Community Voices column. Right. And we're going to publish it. I have it. And it just, they, they feed on each other and they listen to each other. I was just amazed at the, you know, the interaction of the people. I mean, we are very silent as a as a group compared to them. They they are used to working together. So that was my report. Carol, can I ask you how many people were at the meeting? Uh, Helen, about eight, I would say. Okay, that's great. I should. I'll, I'll make an. I'll do that next time. <laughs> We also set up a structure, I'll just add okay. a little point. We set up a structure for ongoing meetings on a regular basis, kind of weekly Weekly to start because, or is it bi-weekly? Bi-weekly to start, and then it'll probably go out to monthly once we get going, but. That's great. Well, thank you to those who are serving on it. And I think it's going to be a great help to Marina and to our program services to, to help, you know, keep things fresh and lively and um, have that, um, that good feedback, um, you know, as we move forward. So thank you for those of you who are serving on it and helping to, with that structure and to Carol for her report. I appreciate that. Um, okay, so speaking of more programs, uh, Marina, can you touch on our grab and go meal events? 
One of innovations mm -hmm. is that we tried Christmas dinner and that was a success. Um, well, in our opinion, we are going to try it again for Valentine's Day. We decided to do it on the February 18th after the Valentine's Day, basically because of the parking lot will be much freer and there will be less traffic in the up, um, in, in the no, in the noon. Well, the, the time for grub, the time for distribution will be like 12 o'clock. And right after that, I believe at two, we will have Zoom activity led by John Clark, which is being liked pretty much by our community about love songs. So we will have like um, real time event where people will be grabbing lunch dinners or lunch uh, lunch lunch meal um, prepared by Maria's catering, and then oh. watching and participating if they choose to in the love songs presentation by uh, by John Clark at two o'clock. Brilliant song. So one event will be. Uh, it will require physical present, uh, presence, uh, drive through lunch distribution catered by Maria's catering, and then Zoom activity by John Clark at two o'clock, love songs. Marina, how many people did we serve for the holiday meal? 120 people. And we're planning to have we... about the same number for Valentine's Day. We received mm -hmm. very positive feedback, probably the only one feedback among like 15 thank you letters and thank you calls. Only one was like, ah, but uh, the rest, the rest was, uh, the rest of the feedback was quite positive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. And we did a measure of home delivery um, to clients as well who wanted to participate and who work with our caseworker. So mm -hmm. we're, we're glad we were able to do that. And I wanted to thank Arlene and her husband for um, her husband who uh, helped to make it festive by uh, being our Santa that day. And to um, Arlene for your wonderful paperwork and extreme generosity with those um, candied gifts that you made for people. So thank you for that. Sure, I'd be happy to do it again for Valentine's Day. Um, who's gonna dress up as Cupid? <laughs> 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 Who would like to take that on as a committee to find yeah. Cupid? <laughs> Cupid, Cupid? Well, you know, you, we must say, or I must say, that the folks who volunteered that day were very mm -hmm. upbeat. And, uh, you know, we welcomed everybody who came. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it just makes for a, a nice feeling so that not only do they get, a, you know, a, a lovely meal, mm -hmm. but they also feel welcome. And so I'm hope well, I'm, I'm assuming that we'll have some more volunteers who would be doing that for Valentine's Day. And anything that you can do, you know, like uh, funny little hats or whatever, just to, you know, give everybody a little chuckle. Mm -hmm. uh, we certainly could all use that this, this day and age. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. And, and, and to Carol's point about having more tasks by this group, I agree. And that's something that Marina and I know had been talking about in terms of, um, you know, having the having more board support around some some items for people to work on. And I think, Arlene, you've, you've hit the nail there about what, um, you know, making this a fun and festive time. People do appreciate the outreach. They, they appreciate us being there and saying hello. They appreciate, you know, just having a few minutes to talk and catch up with us face to face um, and to the friends and to everybody who participated in volunteering. Um, Marina, I think we had some other ones planned for this spring. So maybe you could get with Arlene after and talk about what we could do. And maybe Arlene, you could help with, with um, some ideas about how to make the rest of the year successful because we're looking to do one more a month. Sure, I'd be happy to do that. And, um, you know, there's so many events that Presently, I can't run that I usually run, um, and people, you know, are missing it. Uh, one in particular is a tea, um, mm. so maybe we could do some kind of a, a virtual tea or or something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and again, we'll discuss that at a later time. That's great. Okay, Arlene, thank you, and we will follow up with you. Okay.
Um, anything else on program, Marina? Carol, you need to unmute yourself. Yep. I do. Unmute. unmute yourself. Yeah, yep. wonderful. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Arlene, I'd love to work with you on that. You got it, Carol. And I follow <laughs> directions. I really do. <laughs> I'm a good second. We can, we, we'll get together outside. Yeah. <laughs> So what if it's only 30 degrees and we'll make stuff? Okay? <laughs> That'd be good. This yeah. month we're starting two more groups. We'll see how it goes. One group is pet lovers. Thank you, Arlene, mm -hmm. for sharing this idea with us. We will try. So please encourage if you have any any seniors with friends, senior friends with pets. I have only son as my pet and he's not a pet. <laughs> He's not friendly pet, <laughs> uh, but please encourage them to uh, to come uh, with pets. Um, I will ask Jenya, who is a wonderful dog. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think the dog simply decided not to speak, uh, but he could if we, you know, treated the dog well. Uh, please make sure that this group flies because it can be it can bring a lot of fun. And the uh, the other group is knitting group, and we hope that this group will will take off as well. Uh, could I just mention, you know, when we, we, we started the idea of, of the pet group, I, I didn't foresee it as being a continuation. I saw it as a pet palooza, where it would be just like one particular time where people would showcase their, um, their pet. And, um, it's fine that it's worked its way into an ongoing group, but if that doesn't fly, um, you know, I, I saw it as sort of a fun type of uh, event where people would sort of spotlight their animal. And, um, and so it, it, anyway, it, it's good to, to try it. And I certainly do hope that it continues. Yeah. Will you be joining us? I hope Arlene, you should. Oh, I hope so. Good. All right. <laughs> and you don't have to have a pet to join. If you just want to come and see what kind of pets everybody has, that no, would be a riot no, in itself. Something for Willow to wear. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we can get like, um, there's a couple of, uh, oh yeah, I can't think. Out in Sudbury, Wayland, there's a dog adoption. Oh, buddy, place. Buddy. Buddy dog. Yeah. Maybe we can contact a couple of these places and maybe through Zoom, they can show some of the dogs or, you know, or mm -hmm. the animals. You know, oh, so that could be something that will can, could, can make a few sessions going. That'd be great. If anybody would yeah. like to take that on, feel free. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a very good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. It's a great idea. Okay, good. Um, I just want to make a note before we go to the next item. We do have two other board members who joined us, Ray, of course. It's Tom Lewis and Esther Keeney. Hello to both of you. I just wanted to make sure Janet knew you were also on because Janet is on the phone. Uh, so thanks for yeah, joining thanks us. Still here. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, so does anybody have any other new business or member items they'd like to address? Um, I have one thing, two things to add quickly. One is about the AARP tax program is actually not gonna be participating at the Watertown Senior Center this year um, due to COVID. Um, that's a volunteer run program and statewide, there's um, lots of issues at different senior centers, whether or not their volunteers are coming back. Um, right now there are, it was on the um, on earlier with um, some of the other area COA directors close to us, Belmont, Waltham, Newton. Um, they're still in the process of trying to figure out how their programs are gonna run, but we're hopefully gonna be able to direct our people to call one of those centers for them to get an appointment. Um, and there may not even just be in-person appointments, there may be even sort of like a scanning center where people will bring their documents to be scanned. And then it's a very virtual experience this year. And I've had a converse, some conversations with seniors who are not happy about the virtual experience. Um, you know, they like to take their tax returns and send them off on their own and get a receipt from the post office. But um, we're really moving to a more of an electronic process for many folks, particularly in that program, um, just because of the restrictions with the virus. Um, uh, that's all I have right now. So I'll open the floor for any comments, new business. Yeah, Tom? I'd like mm -hmm. to make a comment uh, just to kind of bring up 
not necessarily for discussion in this group format, but um, as we all know, the vaccine is probably the most significant thing in everybody's life right now. And um, it's obviously being left for states to figure out, each state to figure out what its operational plan is going to be. And I talked to uh, the uh, town's health department and some and to the people at uh, Tufts Medical Center in terms of what their plans were for distribution. And everybody seems to be sort of flat footed at this point in terms of having a, a plan set up. And yet the statistics that uh, the president elect soon to be president is asking for is about 200 and at least 240 million people vaccinated. And the and it could be a larger figure than that, but at least 240, so it's a lot of people. And we're, we're now down about two or 3 million people is all we've got vaccinated in this time. So I guess what I'm wondering here is if we can somehow as part of our function, make some kind of attempt for us to first be as well informed as possible and get mm -hmm. that, you know, every, information source we have, get that pumped out to our membership, so to speak. Um, but also to kind of let people know that this is important to us, that we're, you know, it seems to me sometimes while the newspapers say that it's an important issue, uh, I, I wonder if the people in the state the government really think it's that important because I haven't heard anything yet. So I guess A, just look for us to be informed and then B, for us to kind of advocate for people who particularly in the senior group 75 or above who do or do not have uh, other health conditions. Yeah. I'm not sure what the right yeah. format for that is, whether that's a program issue or whether that's a, what that is. Yeah, um, I, well, thanks. Go ahead, Arlene, go ahead. Do we know, um, I remember that um, that a lady who was retired nurse uh, used to volunteer her time giving flu shots. And our clientele would be retired, for, I, I assume, would be uh, mostly retired folks. So is the town looking for various people who could volunteer to give the inoculations? Uh, the University of Massachusetts uh, they're taking their medical students and they're training them in order to give the inoculations because as I understand it, we're lacking in people who are knowledgeable or, and who are able um, to give the inoculations. So I guess through our newsletter, we could reach out to LPNs or RNs who are retired and um, if the town wants it, have them uh, volunteer to at one point or another, uh, you know, give the inoculations. Thank you, Arlene. I can take that request and Tom's information to the health department as a request yeah. for information because um, I don't have any information. Um, I have limited information right now from Elder Affairs, which is talking about um, having home care workers, people who are literally working in the home with seniors to hopefully be a part of this phase one. But as we know, phase one right now is all about first responders and medical professionals. Um, so that's being worked out right now. I don't have any other further information except the one, um, one piece that came out this week. Um, and I've been in conversations with the health department, but I don't have any other information other than what you have right now. So I'll be happy to take your questions to the health department and see what they can provide in terms of the, if they need volunteers, what the town response is going to be, if it's going to be a response, you know, with the pharmacies um, or, you know, doctor's offices or other general sites like Gillette, I know is opening up Gillette Stadium um, to be a site as well as Tom, your piece about um, what the critical messaging is about getting vaccinated. Yeah, yeah, I called uh, the town health department the other day, you know, just as a sort of flat-footed citizen mm -hmm. uh, and to, to inquire what the story is. And they shuttled me around to the nurse and the nurse said that he had no information uh, about what the plan was. So that's, I'm not critical of the nurse. I'm not saying that. I'm just mm -hmm. saying that's the, apparently the status right now is there's a, there's a lot of intention to get things done, 
but I don't know whether somebody's doing that or what. And, mm -hmm. you know, I used to be a planner for the state and I know what it takes to plan things. And you've got to, you've got to figure things out. You have to staff things, and budget things, and, you know, stuff that you guys all know about, mm -hmm. but it just has to be done. And I don't know what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of states are not doing much. And, th and yet there are other states who are, I can't name them off the top of my head, but who have uh, something like 30, 40% of their people already vaccinated. Hmm. Uh, this is Janet. Um, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead, Janet. Well, go yeah, ahead, Janet. Yeah, um, yes, um, I, I, I was reading in the, uh, in the paper the other day uh, uh, about um, the uh, 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 responders and, and the uh, vaccine that is being issued out. And then also this article addressed an issue that um, the hospitals or, or uh, the centers have a certain number of vials of vaccine that they're able to give. And if they are expecting, say, they have 500 and 275 people show up, uh, the balance of that uh, since there's a mandate by the state that it only be given at this point to a certain group of people, the remaining vials are not being used, and they are in fact being destroyed because it has a a, uh, a, a short shelf space. So uh, that would tend for me to believe that this is sort of uh, from the state house and the mandate to allow more people to to be given this. Has anybody been aware, been aware of this uh, this article that, that appeared? Yeah, I read it too. I read it. Yeah. It, yeah, that's disturbing because uh, if the vaccine is there uh, and they're not able to use it because of the mandate to inoculate certain groups of people, um, that's that's really a shame. Mm -hmm. Because I think, given the opportunity, there would be a lot more people showing up to this mm -hmm. if it were loosened. But it, it seems to be sort of locked for momentarily. Mm. Yeah, thank you for that, Janet. Yep. Thank, no, it, yeah, it kind of disturbs me. It, it bothers me because, uh, you know, it's precious material. <laughs> and, right, uh, right. If, uh, you know, there are many that can use it, and uh, myself, speaking for myself, I fall into two two categories <laughs> of that. And uh, you know, there are many more that could use it, and it, it seems a shame that they just discard it because they are locked into a certain uh, a certain restriction. But um, that uh, that you know. I, I, that, that's where the, you know that's where the article that's what the article stated so mm -hmm. uh, seems a shame yeah, yeah. Well, thank you Janet I'm sure there'll be more to come in the days and weeks and ahead um, you know as we yeah. all plan for this so thank you and feel free to forward anything to us that I can send out to the board um, you know okay for, that would be helpful okay. mm -hmm. I will do that thank you um Okay, is there anything else that needs to come forward? I'd like to make a brief statement about the building of the new senior center. And that statement is I don't have any more information, but I wanted that on the record <laughs> as we move forward. <laughs> I've, had, I've had many people ask me, um, you know, this is truly a school building project. Um, the senior center is a separate project. Um, and at this time on January 13th, I have no more information than I did last month. Um, as soon as I do, of course, we will be having those conversations and Marina and I will also be adding to the calendar um, some sessions um, about what people would like to see in the new senior center, um, ideas for, for different programming with different space and just to have those conversations going, um, you know, as we, as we prepare for change in the future. Has the senior center given uh, a written program suggestion list to the to the uh, wherever the team is who's running that project? Yep, yep. we met with the uh, my staff myself and my staff met with that team um, at the beginning of December before 
the December board meeting. And uh, we expressed what we currently do, what um, our numbers were in terms of people that we saw, our issues with parking, um, our issues for more parking, um, our issues for you know access for emergency vehicles, should we need them, um, our issues for space, um, taking into account that we also, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have the relationship with the Phillips School Gym all these years um, and sort of what sort of space would make sense. And they took all that information with them and they said, thank you very much. And this really helps to inform, you know, what, what could be in place, you know, on that part of the property. Um, but then we haven't heard anything else since then, nothing. Um, I know the holidays were in the way, now it's the beginning of the new year. Um, I'm happy to you know get back to everybody as soon as I hear something, but they are fully aware of of what we do, and I think they were very amazed about what we did, and the numbers that we were seeing, um, and the types of things that that we were able to provide to the community. Any more questions oh. on that or anything else? They haven't started the construction yet, did they? Oh, no, no. The, um, the project itself for the high school building project um, is a lot of planning between now and the fall of 2021, um, including a debt exclusion vote, which would probably take place before the next round of holidays. Um, there's a lot of planning and preparation that has to take place before any sort of demolition or building would, would, would happen. This is nothing that's going to happen overnight. This is going to be many, a few more years yet in the making. Okay. Are we going to be without a senior center for a period of time? Um, hi, Esther. Thank you for the question. Um, yes, we will be. And I don't know also where we are going to be in that interim. Again, another discussion that still has to take place. Um, and I have, you know, I, I put it out there that it would, it would you know, nice to have uh, some thoughts on that. But I think, um, again, it's, it's very early in the process. And um, our space does need to be obtained for them to create their the wonderful new project that the new high school will be. Uh, so those those discussions will will happen. And I have true faith. I have been told time and again how supported um, the seniors are in Watertown. That their home in the senior center is incredibly important, and that they there will be a wonderful wonderful place in the interim, as well as um, you know what what is to be built. So I have complete faith in that. It's just a, a long road to get there. So uh, even though the strategy hasn't been discussed, my assumption is that there's at least sort of tacit agreement that what that means is that the senior center will be vacated. I'm just guessing this from other construction projects. So I hope no one's listening and quoting me on things. But my guess would be then that for some period of time, perhaps several years, the senior center, the, as we know it, would be closed so that the reconstruction can go on there. And mm -hmm. that then obviously forces us into a standby space, you know, that will be set up in to operate for that period of time. Correct. That would be my understanding, you know, and in others, other groups that have had this done, you know, perhaps it's, you know, it's, it might be scattered. I mean, maybe there's a program that happens, you know, in a different building for a different reason, or maybe there's, you know, you know, the Zoom piece, this is sort of timely now with the Zoom piece, you know, we've got a lot of good um, technology behind us that we're able to do a, a bit of a virtual senior center. Um, you know, so I think we're, we're set up to actually still provide a lot of good programming and solid services for people who need it. Um, we just wouldn't be in that same physical space for a while. Hopefully there will be Would a physical be space. too early um, to reach out to say some of the churches in the area to see if they usually have um, large enough space, like a, a small auditorium or gymnasium um, that might not be used that would the town pay rent to them uh, to do that? Or is this just entirely too early to think about that? Yeah. I think your suggestion is wonderful. I think in terms of reaching out, it might be a little premature at this point. I think um, as we convene a group, uh, I'd like to think by the end of February, we can start convening a group that starts talking about these issues. And I'd like to have a, a board member help to lead that group. Um, we would we would express, you know, explore those issues at that time. But absolutely, I think that's a great I suggestion. I just know Thank that you. with the network, um, 
to establish a rapport with the different churches in the area certainly did help out in us reaching various um, segments of the population and just for for having them go to bat for us. So even though it's mm -hmm. early, it might be something to tuck away in the back of our minds, just to mention that it probably mm -hmm. would be coming up. And I think a lot of the churches mm -hmm. in, in the area are looking for, for rentals and uh, to have their mm -hmm. space utilized. Mm -hmm. That's a really excellent suggestion. Thank you, Arlene. So definitely more to come on all of this. And I, I appreciate your support. Good. I'll meet at my house. Okay. Okay. <laughs> right on Common Street. Everybody has to take a turn. <laughs> Good. All right. Well, it's um if, if there's nothing further, um, I appreciate, you know, every, anybody have anything else you'd like no, to add, Tom? No, I was going to just ask if it was time mm -hmm. to w enter a, a request, you know, a, what do we call it? A, a, we're done, so I forgot what it's called. <laughs> a motion, <laughs> a motion to adjourn. <laughs> may, I, may I humbly <laughs> offer a simple, <laughs> I stick in the you know, <laughs> it has been such a busy day today for us. It is. You have our program coordinator to thank for that. So thank, thank you, you, Marina. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, so we have our motion. We have our second. Yes. Uh, and okay. yes, Carol? Yeah, yeah okay. it's 446. Right. 446. Okay, and with that, um, the, this meeting is, is completed. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye now.